This is the Slavix Model 13, and today I'm going to review it. I'm going to take a look at its quirks and features, and at the end I'm going to give it a John score. And uh, if uh, any of this sounds familiar, it's actually because uh, of the inspiration of Doug DeMiro and his awesome YouTube channel. Uh, he's got millions of followers, but more importantly, he's got an awesome following in the reviews that he does. And I think he does an awesome job. And so I hope Doug will maybe think this is funny if he ever stumbles across it one day on YouTube. But Doug, you've been a great inspiration for all of us. Uh, great job with your YouTube content. Keep it up. And for those of you who haven't checked out his channel, actually go check it out. Pretty awesome automotive reviews and really uh, neat little things for, for, like I said, kind of quirks and features. But, but ultimately, this is the Slavix Model 13, right? And, uh, and I'm going to walk through all the different quirks and features. And this is the real Gear G1000. This is the Honeycomb... Uh, Alpha Yoke and the Bravo flight controls and these items are brand new to the market We are actually the first to support them and Additionally with our strategy of supporting as many different avionics components uh, That you can in the marketplace for these Slavix tabletop avionics panels uh, This is just another new set and ultimately flight simmers around the world are going to win as a result of these coming out So these are highly anticipated. I'm excited to review them Walk through the Slavix Tabletop Avionics panel. As you know, that is what we manufacture here in Chicago. So uh, keep it right here and uh, we'll get going after it. So as I mentioned, this is the Slavix Model 13. And I uh, really want to walk through just the different components that everything is, is made up of here. So uh, once again, the Slavix Tabletop Avionics panel, that's an all metal construction. Got this nice finished glare shield here, nice edge trim molding. And, uh, and really, uh, this, this is what integrates all the different components together from the, the real Gear G1000 and the Honeycomb Yoke and Throttle Quadrant. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is how we actually mount these Honeycomb components to the Slavix Tabletop Avionics panel. And so, what I've got is uh, I've got the actual backing plate here that is supplied with the honeycomb uh, system. Okay, so each one of these backing plates and really mounting plates for that matter uh, comes with uh, the yoke and then the throttle. And what we recommend using is the actual clamps that also come with them. Okay, so these clamps sit in there very simple um, and then these will go ahead and the cutouts will all be made to accommodate the sizes of, of these different yokes and throttles and things. Uh, but what this means though is ultimately you're going to clamp this whole thing to the desk. Okay, and that means your Slavix panel, your yoke, your throttle, everything is going to be mounted to your desk. So one thing that we set out a long time ago to do with our company is to make panels that didn't require clamping your desk. And you're probably thinking to yourself like, holy cow, this is the complete opposite of what you're trying to do. And it, it is to an extent. However, the most important thing to us is the customer experience and the consumer experience, really, for that matter. And so that's what we set out to do originally is enhance that experience. But then this yoke, this throttle, they came along and the opportunity is just way too great not to support these. So uh, the trade-off of not supporting them, but supporting them with a clamp and everything else, yeah, we're going to recommend you support them with a clamp. So, so that's how everything's going to mount. Okay, it's pretty simple. It's really self-explanatory, but um, that's, that's going to be on both of those. You know, one other little uh, feature here on, uh, on, on these components here. So obviously you can see these, these throttle quadrant uh, levers and whatnot. You've got reverse levers and all that. But, you know, they can be swapped out for some more general aviation look and feel uh, pieces here. Um, and these are just simple, just, you know, it's like a mixture lever, for example. But it comes with prop, throttle, mixture um, for all that. So that's, that's good to have, too. Um, I want to walk through here. So these both connect really simply with just USB-C. Um, here, that's USB-C, and they come with a USB-C to USB-A cable for the yoke and the throttle. No separate power adapters are required, so that's really nice. Um, obviously, USB-C takes a little bit more power, but uh, it's got, what, USB 3.1, I think, backing that up for that power requirement. Um, so if you do use these, my recommendation is to use them with a USB 3.1 powered hub on the back of the Slavix panel, okay? So you get a little seven port Amazon Basics USB 3.1 hum, you mount that on the back of the panel, and then the PFD, the MFD, the yoke, the throttle, everything connects into that, and you have one connection that actually goes into your computer. So pretty simple. Now, in terms of what's required to run the RealSim Gear G1000, it's gonna be two USBs per uh, panel. So two, two, 
one HDMI, a second HDMI, and then one power and a second power. So overall, pretty pretty simple process here. And, uh, and really, you know, the, the features of this thing are great. You know, it's got this trim wheel, it's got this nice gear lever, a full autopilot stack, uh, altitude, vertical speed, heading, um, you know, course, all this stuff, uh, indicated airspeed too. It's got seven switches down here. It's got a nice uh, little panel here, some stuff, autopilot on off, uh, flap lever, flap lever. Looks like it can go into beta as well here with the throttle, so that's pretty nice. Um, some of those TBM guys might like that. Uh, I've got a little spoiler here. The, uh, the yoke, full range of motion, which is really great there. Um, and then we got a nice starter switch, avionics plus one, two alternator, battery, light switch as well, beacon, all that kind of stuff right down here. So, you know, when you think about getting in the habit of where things are in a cockpit, um, you know, I'm just going to call Cessna 172, right? Maybe you're training. And so uh, you got a nice push to talk back here. So that's pretty realistic. Got a nice hat switch when you're in the plane, able to kind of look around, uh, which is really nice. If you add some electric trim, you can use some of these things here for that electric trim, maybe some rudder trim, autopilot disengage, things like that. Uh, your lights are normally kind of down here, right, when you're flying. So uh, your starter, yeah, okay, move from the left to the right, that's fine, but it's getting that concept of turning on that master switch and then, you know, starting and increasing mixture and things like that. So uh, from that perspective, I think it's really powerful. One other really powerful thing about the setup is it does have a trim wheel. So anybody who's watched any of my videos and anybody knows about what I kind of view and think is something really important when you're learning to fly is obviously manual trim. And learning how to trim away that control pressure in the yoke with using a trim wheel and just getting straight and level. And that's preventing you from constantly going back and forth and back and forth with the yoke, right? So it's got that trim wheel all integrated into it. So, you know, these things, these things are awesome. I'm gonna kind of let the video do itself. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a demo of all this stuff working in X-Plane 11. Hopefully that's enough for you guys to understand how it all works, how it all connects. And, uh, and if you're thinking about purchasing any of this stuff, hopefully it's beneficial for you. So uh, let me know if you got any questions and we'll get into the demo. All right, so we got everything uh, basically set up. Everything's you know configured, all the controls, drivers installed, all that. We got X-Plane 11, we're currently paused in the sim. Um, get it, just basically do a quick traffic pattern. So really simple. You know, I'm gonna use some flap lever over here. I've got my mixture here. I've got my throttle here. Um, so, you know, really simple from that perspective, G1000. You're gonna see the MFD come on when I flip this bus too. And uh, let's go ahead, we'll get after it. So, goal here is to obviously be keyboardless, okay? The goal is to get rid of the keyboard, okay? And with these Honeycomb flight controls, we should be able to do that, okay? And, uh, and that's why we're gonna put this over here to, to the side and hopefully do not need to touch it. We'll find out. So there's that MFD coming on. And uh, go ahead here. And we're gonna quick release the parking brake. So look at that guys, it kinda already messed up. But uh, obviously I could just set the parking brake button to be one of these here and you're good. So anyways, uh, flaps 10, boom, take off here. Ah, it's a little rough, a little touchy on the rudder pedals. Airspeed's alive, looking good. Green, 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 green. Looking for 55 knots here. And rotate, so there's 55. And uh, we're coming up. Want to set that nose down, so a little forward trim, set it down right on the horizon. We're looking to build up to 74 knots. That's our VY speed there. And uh, we'll keep climbing out. <laughs> this thing feels massively smooth and, uh, and massively awesome. I mean, this is, this is great. So this is really nice from a trim wheel perspective here. You can just set that on there. And uh, there's 74, just about, we'll put those flaps up. We're looking for about 1200 MSL, about 500 AGL to start that first turn. So we'll go ahead, we'll go left traffic pattern here. Add in a little bit of rudder there, nice left traffic pattern. You can see, we can, uh, should be able to zoom in here as well. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So that's pretty cool. 
you can see the, the dot right there. That was a yellow target, which was traffic, which was like actually a guy taking off of 3-3. Uh, three, three. So that's actually kind of cool. But uh, yeah, here, we'll just do this. Gonna power back a little bit. I mean, guys, I'm, this is just really quick and dirty, okay? So, I mean, I, I have not, so there were about 1,700, okay, for our bug of, uh, of where we're going to be at there, pattern altitude, 1,700. So, look, I haven't really configured this thing a whole lot. This was literally just plug it in, test all this stuff out. I can tell you that pushing forward, this yoke feels really, really nice. Um, coming back, it also feels really, really nice. So nothing but awesome things to say about that. Obviously in downwind, we want to be about 2,000 RPM, 95 knots, 1,700, and trimmed out. So if we kind of look over about midfield, and so kind of get in the habit of what would you be doing midfield? Seatbelts, fuel selector both, mixture rich. Um, beam the numbers, you're gonna start that descent, first notch of flaps. So start thinking about all those things when you're practicing in the sim at home, there we're still at 1700. So we've kept that altitude nicely, about 90 knots, so right about there. Do these things at home in the sim and from a muscle memory perspective and you'll be a lot better in the cockpit. So anyways, we'll come down to about 1600 RPM, 1500, under 110, so that's that first notch of flaps. It's gonna balloon up, a little bit of forward trim, keep that descent coming about 450, 500 and uh, feet per minute where it's a little high right now. We'll keep that left turn coming. Yeah, whoops, bump the throttle there. And uh, that was my mixture, full rich. So then we're gonna keep uh, making that turn. Keep that nose down when you make that turn. Big thing with the left turn, you don't wanna come back and pull back. You hear that stall horn? That's a very dangerous turn to make on base to final, right? So keep that nose down as you're coming in to uh, your base and final and all that. It's something really good to, to just kind of remember and keep in mind. We're obviously a little bit low here. We'll be coming in, get that rudder in. So these are all really good things that you can kind of practice at home in your sim uh, before you go out either for a flight. So we got two white and two white. So that's, we're a little high. We're under 65, we'll go full flap. We're about 60 knots, so get that nose down. And there's the red coming in. Now we're about on glide slope. Keep that nose coming down. I mean, this this like feels really awesome, guys. I mean, it's really, really immersive. And uh, yeah, this is this is awesome. And there we are. Keep coming back. Keep coming back nicely. And there's that stall horn. Keep coming back. There it is. Nice and smooth, right? So, um, really cool. We'll uh, turn out the mixture here. Really awesome. Uh, I know I probably <laughs> said it a thousand times, but uh, this is something that's really new to the market that we haven't seen before. So that's why I'm so excited about it. And I hope you guys are excited about it too. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is pretty neat. So, Anyways, uh, that's the quick demo, just a quick traffic pattern, something simple. Obviously, uh, all the training you know, is done at uh, your leisure and what's, what's correct and everything. Um, so this, this is not flight training here, but, but uh, really, really neat stuff. Couple it with something like Pilot Edge and, uh, and you got a really winning combination uh, of training in your own home. So we'll see you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Slavics.com, S-L-A-V-X, Stay Level Avionics. And uh, this is John signing off and have a great night. We'll see you guys. This is a 2019 BMW 330i. This is the Slavic Model 13. Gotta, I gotta, gotta get that just right. This is a 2001 BMW 7. It's a 2018 BMW M5. Yeah, so I gotta, I gotta uh, we'll dial it in here a little. All right, Doug, you're doing good.